object and also a kind of perspective um, view on an object. Um, I found this uh, nice trick at uh, Niku's blog, uh, one of his posts, I'll show you here. Um, on the 7th of August, he, he posted about uh, finding a nice trick uh, to create this reflection with a mask, uh, a black to white mask, and we're going to use that to, uh, I'm going to use that here to demonstrate uh, a couple of different ways of doing reflections. So first we'll do a nice simple uh, piece of text here. We will make that somewhat bigger. Actually, I'll capitalize this here. We'll give it a nice, um, choose a nicer font for our demonstration. Here we go, and I will pick, um, I don't know, maybe a nice bright, sh bright red uh, to use. So it's very simple to create a nice simple reflection this way. You can take the object, piece of text, say like this. I'll duplicate it with Control D. So I've got a second copy there. With that, uh, one of those copies selected, I'll hit the uh, mirror button. Then I'll control and drag it down holding the control key so I keep it aligned bring it down that way so now we have a mirrored reflection now here's where the, the mask comes in basically you create a rectangle it could be in any shape but uh, for this case a rectangle is easiest over top of that object and now we'll bring up the fill and stroke dialog box and we'll change that make sure there's no stroke set and then the fill will change it to a gradient. We'll edit the gradient and make it a simple solid black to a solid white gradient. There we have it here. We'll edit the, the gradient so that there's black on the bottom or somewhere close to the bottom. And holding control, we'll keep that vertical and pull the white up somewhere. Now white, in this case, is fully transparent and black is fully opaque in the mask. So you'll see here in a second what we achieve by having black on the bottom and a, a white or gray on the top. What you do is select both the rectangle with the mask and the object underneath, and then simply select Object, Mask, Set. And now we have a reflection uh, below that. OK, so that's a very simple one. You'll see if I back up for a second, and adjust this mask, you'll see that if I if I were to make it full white on the top, you'll just get a, a brighter, more transparent reflection. Uh, we'll try that now here. I'll show you again what the effect is. Sorry, grab the bottom two objects. Object mask set. Now it's fully red here, just like it is above. Usually, I find it more realistic if I adjust that white point higher up, probably something like this, and you get a bit of a, a more faded reflection, but it's a matter of taste. Again, object mask set. So there's one type of reflection. Now if we take this text and we duplicate it and move it over here, get this out of the way. So we'll use that same text. This time we'll turn it into a, a path. The way I did that was Control shift c or you could do Object or Path, sorry, uh, Object to Path. So now when we select this, we see it's a path. And we'll do the uh, perspective um, transformation to this by doing some type of perspective box, something like this pretty arbitrary, but again, select the box first, hold shift and select the path, and do effects, modify path, perspective. We can get rid of the box. Now we have the same text in a perspective view. Now this is where I was trying for the longest time to figure this out. 
uh, and finally managed to do it reasonably well. So I'll select the object again. I will um, duplicate it, mirror it again, and direct control drag it down. Now you'll see that that doesn't really match up. You can try rotating, it won't look right. And what I found you can do is use the skew uh, handle here and just drag that up. You might have to adjust it a few times to get it to, to sit the way you want it to look realistic. Say something like this. And this is where uh, the beauty of that mask trick that we saw at uh, on Niku's blog comes in handy. Create some kind of, you can use a rectangle. I chose to use just some kind of polygon. It doesn't matter what the object is as long as it's enclosed. Again, with the object selected, we do the fill and stroke. We turn off the stroke, make the fill a gradient. Again, we could choose the original gradient, but that would screw up what we did over here, so possibly. So what we'll do is just edit this gradient again. Same as before. Black to solid white. And again, we'll adjust the gradient handles. Now in this time, we don't want the mass to be vertically up and down this way. We want it to kind of tilt a little bit. And you'll see, you might again have to try this a few times to get it right and experiment with what you look you want to have. But the idea is the same some kind of mass black to white here. Select both objects and select object mask set. And again, we get a reflection in perspective. Now, that's great for any objects you make at Inkscape. It's fairly easy to do. Uh, if you have multiple objects, you can group them before you duplicate and reflect them. Um, you can apply that mass to a grouping of objects and you'll get the same effect, uh, which is nice. So if you have objects of different colors and, and uh, patterns and things, you can um, mask them this way and get a nice gradient type of reflection uh, very easily using that black and white mask trick. Now what we'll do here is next show you how to do this with a picture. Now what I've done is I've taken a picture here, a bitmap, and I've done this perspective transformation in the GIMP. Um, you can do it in Photoshop or whatever program you want. Uh, Inkscape can't really do a, a transformation on a bitmap like this. You would have to convert all of this to a path and it gets very complex and um, your machine will definitely chug and your results won't be any better. So it's best to take an image, uh, use a bitmap editor like the GIMP or Photoshop or something like that, PaintShop Pro. All of those programs will do kind of perspective, allow you to do some kind of perspective effect like this. So that's all I've done here. Now what I'll do is just to spice things up a little bit, I will um, create, using the Bezier tool, I'll create a rectangle kind of uh, to simulate a, a border, you know, a photo paper border around this. There's lots of different ways you could create this. All I'm doing is creating a, by eye, as usual, <laughs> I'm creating a, uh, a paper border around here. I'm going to turn off the stroke and I'm going to make the fill kind of an off-white here. Okay. I will send that to the back. As you can kind of see, probably with this video quality, you won't see that, but later I'm going to turn this background black and you'll see it as well. Um, so again, what I'll do is take those objects and I will group them together. So they're one object. Now again, simply duplicate it. Oh, sorry, I forgot to duplicate that. Duplicate it first, mirror it, drag it down. And again, just use the skew handle. And try again to try and make that as close to correct as you can. And the method is no different. I'm just creating a polygon to hold that black and white mask. Turn off the stroke, set the fill to a gradient, edit the gradient to be black to solid white. And we will adjust 
the handles once more. Again, you may have to play with this. I may not get it right the first time uh, to make it realistic. Select both those objects and object mask set. So that's not bad. And just to give you an idea why this is a nice method is because because you're using a mask, you can now change the background behind this, these reflections. Um, lots of times you'll see a black background looks very nice. So if I just change um, my document properties, uh, you'll see how it looks when I change the background to a solid black. So you get a nice reflection there. You can see I didn't line that up perfectly, but you get the idea. So you can get nice flat reflections and nice perspective reflections. And again, you can take a grouping of however many objects uh, and mirror them down, skew them up to align them, uh, and then do that nice mask um, to get the reflection. And that's it. I uh, hope you got some use out of it, and thank you for watching.